Mikel David, welcome to An Actor Despairs. How you doing, brother? I'm good, man. Thank you for having me on. Oh, man, it's a real pleasure, man. You know, you're in my favorite episode of Black Mirror of oh, all time. That's the best one. Everyone knows that, you know. But <laughs> it's so cool to, you know, man, it, it really gives me such immense, like, pleasure having seen you succeed so young and, and things like My Brother the Devil and Montana and, and, and just, you know, now we have The Irregulars, man. I mean, and you did Snatch. You know, yeah. the TV adaptation, man. I mean, you are, you are motherfucking crushing the game, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's been, it's been a long journey. You know, I, I started doing this when, when I was, when I was 13, you know, that's when I, that's when I, my brother, the devil. So it's, um it's been a long journey, man. You know, it's been, I'm 23 now. So it's, it's, it's 10 years of, of, of work, 10 years in the game, um, and I'm, I'm very, very grateful. I think it's, you know, to, to be working as an actor is really, really difficult. And to, to be working consistently over 10 years is, is, is incredible. But, um, and I think every, every kind of role is kind of just, you learn from it and then it kind of like adds on your building blocks as an actor. And then, you know, now with 10 years of experience, I feel like I'm very, I wouldn't say, I, I don't think I'm a veteran. I think there's so much of learning to do still, but I do feel like from when I came in to where I'm at now yeah. is a complete different, a complete different artist. Yeah. That's a beautiful journey. I can only imagine. And, and, you know, man, it's, it's, it's really like watching justice prevail. You're incredibly talented, man. And, and we're about to see you get shot out of a cannon. I heard, you know, that I can say this cause it's public that the regulars already got picked up for season two. Well, yeah. I mean, I think I've seen that as well. Yeah. But they haven't told us anything. So I'm Oh really? Yeah, so they haven't told us anything. So I don't want to take. So I'm just I'm taking it. As All right. Everything. So I'm, knock on wood. All right. Yeah, knock then. on wood. Um, you know, and it, what's weird is that it, it always kind of happens like this. Like we started filming the regulars in September, like 2019. So it's been a long time. Do you know what I mean? Almost yeah. two years. And you guys it. got yeah. screwed up a little by the pandemic, right? Yeah. So you know, we started in September and everything was blessed, and then we we got to like March and um. There was we had about three weeks left of filming, and I remember um, it was me, Harrison, and Jojo who played Billy and Leo, and we were just there. And then some, one of the ads come in and said, "Look, I think guys, I, I think we're going to be sending you home for the weekend." And I was like, "What do you mean sending us over the weekend?" And um, they were like, "Yeah, because of this this COVID thing and that." And at the time, I had no idea what COVID was, but they ended up sending us home. And you know, when I thought when I knew it was going to be serious, is that they, instead of sending us on a train, they all got us drivers. Yeah, and we and we was filming in Liverpool. We all live in London, so that's a like that's a long drive, and we had all had individual cars and oh oh really because thought, they wanted to secure you and isolate you from yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's when I was like okay this is something serious um and then we broke for filming for like four months and wow. then when we went back we had like twelve weeks left we had three weeks and then they extended it to twelve weeks because of all the COVID regulations because it would take it's moved slower now with all the precautions yeah. Um, that's it but that's yeah it was it was it was really weird man it was just really strange wow i can only imagine well, well brother if it's cool with you before we get there let's start at the very beginning where you grew up in the uk where, whereabouts yeah. so i grew up in northwest london a little town in northwest london called harrow um yeah and I've, I've grown up there my whole life went to school there i went to um the first i went to three different schools growing up i went to the first school is roxbourne roxbourne manor in south harrow um and that was great. You know, I met a lot of friends there, made a lot of friends. And then we moved from South Harrow into Kenton. And um, I went to a school called Kemmel Park. And then I went to Glebe. And then I went to high school, Harrow High School. With, um, made loads of friends there. Still pals with most of them to this day. Um, and it was when I was in high school, actually, is when we started doing the acting. So we went into, I was in high school um, in year eight. My, my, my dad was making a YouTube show at the time, right, where he would. So if you don't mind me, are, are, are your parents in the arts at all? No, not at all. So like nobody in my family is 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 in this world at all. It's like a completely alien world. Um, but my father was, you know, I think he's I think he saw an opportunity on YouTube. And you know, this is when YouTube wasn't what it is today. Yeah. You know, everybody's you know. a YouTuber. Now. Oh God, yeah. You know? So I think he saw a little gap in the market and he went out and, and, and did this um game show, like online game show, where he'd get two men. And they was like going out chatting up women, and it was like who could get the most numbers, sort of thing. And it was like, a oh, that's awesome! Game show. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he did that, and he put it out and stuff. 
Um, but it didn't really get, like, it got a little response, but it didn't get a huge response. And then I was kind of like, look, I think maybe, I think it'd be funny if I went and did it. Like, I was, you know, this little kid, like, I'm, I'm, I'm small now, I'm 5'8", but like, then I was tiny, do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I, was, like, I think it would be funny if I did it, if I went out, and I was chatting up older women. Like, yeah, like, cute like kid, women. you know what I mean? Ballsy, totally. Yeah, I thought yeah. Like, that would be quite funny. Um, yeah. At first, I was like super, super shy about it. Like, I was a little bit like, all apprehensive. But I think, you know, being like, my dad was filming it, my uncles were filming it as well. So I think that gave me the confidence. And, you know, we, we, we would sit down and sort of write down like little hooks and little jokes that we wanted to get out so then we just went out and literally just shot it in the street you know we didn't we didn't get down models or anything like that we just went out and done it with random girls um i mean then we did some other little sketches and we created this character little mikhail who was this the backlog to him was that he um he was the sultan of brunei's son and living in, yeah so like sasha, sasha baron cohen's you know what i mean <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> The, the Sultan of Brunei's son, yeah. and um, he's been left alone in this massive mansion um, with sort of like the endless funds to live life in London. And and off of this, he's trying to live this bachelor lifestyle being 12, 13 years old. Um, and uh, that was kind of the backlog. So we went out and did it and we had a little bit of success with that. Um, and then we went and... Uh, Can we see it still online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the videos are like, like are still out, you know. Um, if you don't mind, like, what, what's it called? Because I'm definitely checking it out. Yeah, check out the Lil Mikel show, L I L, and then my name, M C K E um K E W L, and then yeah, you'll see them up there. Um, uh, it's weird because you know we did them, and I, I've never thought about taking them down off YouTube or anything like that. I feel like um, for me, that's my foundation. That's where I started. Yeah, I'm man. not embarrassed by it. You know, I think without YouTube, I did, like there's no way I would have got into acting because where where we come from, the, the idea of drama schools and and um, and theater performances and stuff, it isn't it isn't it isn't new, to, it's, it's, a, it's a very new thing. So um, I think without YouTube, without having that space and that platform to sort of, to show that I'm an entertainer, to show that I can do things, I don't think I ever would have got into that, that acting door. So it's something I, I do look at with, with high regards. That's beautiful, man. And, and while you guys were doing that show, was there a moment with your father where he was like, son, you know, you're, you're, you're essentially acting like, maybe we should investigate this more. Was it you that brought it up to him? Like, how did that happen? Well, what happened was is a production company called Princess Productions, who was um, in connection with Channel 4 at the time. Um, their offices was in Whiteley and Bayswater. Um, Sorry, just then, for the American audiences, like Ch Channel 4 is one of the biggest channels in yeah, the UK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, a yeah. huge channel. You yeah, know? Um, yeah. And uh, so they got in contact with us. They saw our YouTube stuff. And they wanted to, um, to have us come down and sit down about talking about a pilot, right? So we went down to their offices and um, they, they were like, look, we, we were piloting this, this sketch show. We really thought we would, um, he'd be great for it. You know, we'll give you a five minute segment on the show and whatnot. And we was kind of like, yeah, that's great. Like, so they took one of our YouTube videos and put it in as, on, onto this show as on the segment. And when they piloted it, they said that there was like a little button that everyone presses when they're enjoying the show. And then my little clip got the most presses. So then they were like, look, we want to actually just do a little Mikel show. Let's, let's try and sort something out so we can pilot that. Yeah. And we was going through the whole talking, negotiating stage. But I think where it fell through was that, you know, me and my dad had created this character, little Mikel, and we was quite headstrong on who he was and what the, yeah. what the, 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 um, the, the, the storyline was almost. Um, and they sort of wanted something different. So it never really worked out. But I mean, from that, you know, we went out and we piloted, we, 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 we shot stuff with them. And, and that was kind of my first inkling into, okay, this is what acting, acting is like. Yeah. So, you know, I'm going out with my dad and acting, but this is like acting, acting. This is like, like the director is saying, you need to hit this and you need to do this and you need to yeah. do that. And you all got to like process and, and, and be able to do it. So I think doing that and then, you know, coming at the end of the, the shoot day when we wrapped and everyone saying, oh, that was great. We've got some great stuff. It gave me the confidence to be like, okay, if I can do this, then let me have a shot at a character that somebody else has written. Yeah. You know, let me read that guy and try and be that guy. And um, that's when we got the open audition for my brother, the devil. And um, that was a really So you didn't experience. have an agent at this time. You just no. found it. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, completely um, independent. Um and we went to this audition for my brother the devil. I remember my mum took me up there. It was in um it was on Tottenham Court Road. Can't remember the place, but 
we've gone in and there was like you know how it's an open audition and there's like like there was hundreds of people there i mean if not thousands sometimes yeah you know yeah it was like it was it was so busy and um you know i remember uh i was actually auditioning for a character that was like 23 years old right <laughs> and, they, and you're, so you're like, 13 like, at this time you know it's like the longest <laughs> long shot in my life but yeah I think the reason i went there was it was my first time in an audition experience so you you wanted the experience whether you got it or not just to yeah do it. yeah so we went down and um i auditioned for for, for the role and whatnot and uh Shaheen, the casting director, actually said to me, oh, we really think you're really good, but this role is just like, it's just not right for you. Um, but there's another role that we can offer you. So they offered me the other role and I obviously I took it and I was, I was so sort of over the moon. I was like, it was, it was, a, it was just such a surreal experience, you know? Um, and without, without um, Shaheen and Sally, the director of My Brother the Devil, that sort of believed in me as a young kid, I wouldn't have had that break onto screen. And then obviously yeah. through My Brother the Devil, Shaheen referred me to do... Um, Shaheen Bang, the casting director, she's amazing. You know, she's still like someone I'm very, very close to to this day. Oh um, man, I love it. But she that. referred me to do Black Mirror as well. You know, so through me, but you, you was, did the pilot though, right? What for Black Mirror? Yeah. No, I didn't do a pilot. So I did a pilot for the Little Mikel show. No, no, I mean, I, I weren't you in the first season of of Black Mirror? Yeah, it's the first season, first episode. Yeah, um, that's that's what I meant. The, sorry, in, in right, America, yeah, yeah. we just call. First episode, first season, right. the pilot. You know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I did, the, I did, I did that one. But um, Shaheen, the casting director of My Brother the Devil, basically just called me up and said, "Look, I, I really thought you was great on My Brother the Devil. I loved your sort of work ethic and your attitude. There's a, there's a, there's a role for you in Black Mirror. It's not a huge role, but you know, it's Charlie Brooker project. It's a huge show. It's going to be a huge show. Would you like to be a part of it?" And I was like, yeah, of course. Like, what yeah. the hell? Like, of course. Thank and you, you so didn't much. know what it is now, you know? Now it's like no, no. the most respected thing in television, you know? You know what I mean? And I remember sort of dri when we was driving to set, because, you know, I still had my chaperone and stuff, and my dad was chaperoning me. I remember we was driving to set, and my dad said, oh, do you know who the writer is? And I said, yeah, I did my research on it, but, you know, he, he, I kind of read that he kind of does, like, wacky, crazy kind of, like, writing and stuff. And he was like, he's, he's going to, this is, this show is going to be massive. Like my dad knew, like, but I obviously being young, being a little kid and, you know, I, I didn't really see the full projector of it, but then, yeah, we went there and we did it. And I think after, oh, cause that, like my, my brother, the devil was a, was an independent movie. You know, Sally had been working on it for 10 years, going, going to different States throughout London and really learning the culture and then yeah. writing. And it was a beautiful script, very intricate. And, and it got into Sundance, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It went into Sundance actually won a couple of awards at festivals. Um, so it was, yeah, I'm really proud of it. But the different, like, that was quite low budget film, and then to go into Black Mirror, which was like a Channel Four budget yeah. thing, I saw the two like difference, and I was like, "What? Well, this is this is really good because I've I've gone to one and it was like quite rooted and quite like okay, it's like we're making a film and yeah. I've gone somewhere else and it's like quite a bigger production. And I think seeing that, I was like, it gave me two things. It told me one that I want to continue acting and like, I want to do this as a career path. But it also told me that creation, like movie curation yeah. is like project creation, I think is somewhere that I would love to go as well. You know, being able to, to, to take something from the ground level um, it's almost like a baby, you know, it's like taking them around and nurture it, look after it. And then, you know, when, they, when they're big enough, you push it out into the world and see what everybody thinks of it. So I think that definitely gave me the, 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 the kind of like fire to, to continue doing film and learning about film. I love that. So basically you, you're interested in development and, and directing and writing as well? Yeah, definitely, man. Have, have, have you started a production company yet? Well, I've got, I've got my little production house. Um, I got my little production house. Um, I haven't made any projects yet. I'm still sort of. Well, writing. you and I are gonna have. I'm gonna fly over tomorrow, man. Let's get going. Yes, let's do it. Let's do it, man. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah, that's um, awesome, man. Uh, I'm curious because you know, for anyone listening, like when you say Black Mirror, it's like, oh my God, it's like Peaky Blinders level, you know. Mm. When when you showed up on a set like that, you know especially like given how intense that first episode is with the pig and, and things like that. I mean, I know you said your father knew the writer and it was going to be big, but when you were on set doing that, did, did you know, like Mikhail, did you feel it? Like this is something special? Yeah, I did. I did. Cause you know what it was? It was like, 
it was understanding who Charlie Brooker was and kind of his style of writing. And, you know, me, I've always kind of been a kid that's ahead of my years, I think. So when I, when I, fu- when I started to fully understand it, like the way Charlie Brooker writes and he kind of, he writes in this, in this way that kind of questions humans, you know, it makes us question ourselves, like, oh, what the hell is wrong with us and stuff. And I think for me, that was something that was on an intellectual level was, was amazing. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And, and I think, you know, I didn't know that it was going to be Black Mirror. Like everybody was going to be like, oh my God, it's Black Mirror. But I did think that people was going to like watch the episode of what happened in that episode and be like, wow, who wrote yeah. this? Who made this? Who had the yeah. audacity to make this? Yeah. It was kind of a, a, that, a, that thing. But I, I didn't know that it was going to, you know, be be um, be taken in the way it's been taken in. And, you know, it's great to see how, how much everybody loves it. Yeah, man, that's amazing. So I'm so curious coming off a project like that and having that rapport with that wonderful casting director, I mean, at this point, ever it sounds like you you didn't have an agent yet, or did you? No, so, I, so I, after Black Mirror is when I decided to sort of look for agents, and um, Eamon Hamduchi, who was uh, um, played uh, um, Repo in uh, My Brother the Devil, um, he was was very very helpful as well. And uh, I have to say as well, My Brother the Devil, you know, has like Letitia Wright, Fali El Hussein, James Floyd, Eamon Hamduchi, and you know, these are all actors that are doing really really amazing things and I came in there being you know you can many people could look at it and say you know you I come into that job being the, the 12 year old 13 year old YouTuber yeah you know and you know in, in 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 some acting spaces you might not get any respect for that but I think Fuck I went on to that job and yeah you know I, yeah, I yeah, that job yeah, and yeah. They, they showed me so much love yeah and like it really made me think oh my god the acting world is like everybody's lovely and you know what I mean and it, it really made me want to do it so I, I have to thank them for that as well but I think after we did My Brother the Devil and Black Mirror then Eamon actually took me for a meeting with his agents to see if it was something that you know he tried to help me out there being you know being a big bro um never worked out you know quite early on in my career and then I'll just I'm just searching for agents like like who do I think is right for me because that's one thing that like I took from com- conversating with Eamon and other actors it was like it doesn't matter the name of your agent. Doesn't matter who they've got in their books. It's about how they care about you. Yeah. Um. And you know, it's I, like I, I it's took... it, it's like a dating and finding a partner. It's yeah, really got to work for both of you. You know. Yeah. Literally. Literally. Yeah. Um. So I was searching around. Um. And because and and you know I I, I came across IAG Identity Drama School. Um. Who's Identity Agency Group now. Um. And. I contacted them with like, with like sort of like a little CV about me and that. Uh, and then they called me into audition and I ended up auditioning with them and they, and they signed me to the agency and they had a drama school attached to the agency. So then once I signed with them, I said, oh, let me go to the drama school for a term. Let me see what it's like. Cause you know, yeah, I'm always up for a challenge. I'm always up for learning. I'm always up for, for trying that new thing. So we went and did that. And then I went into the drama school and I think that was another completely like new learning curve as well, because yeah, you know, it's just, it, everything was just a, like in the early stages, I say the first time, quite two, three years was, was like learning at a hundred mile an hour. Yeah. Because it's like, I was learning, but then at the same time I was like going to work as well. Oh, like, so you were you balancing I mean? like, a lot of plates on your hand, man. You get what I mean? Like I'm, yeah. I'm, like, I'm learning all that. I'm literally learning new stuff about the craft and then like going to set and then like learning new stuff about myself as an actor. And yeah. so it was really, really fun. Like, I think it was almost like a crash course. Do you get what I mean? It was like a mad yeah. crash course. Um, but uh, you know, I think it, it was it was the, everything that's happened has, has has been the perfect way for me anyway. Um, and uh, yeah, I just I, I wouldn't change anything. Yeah, you know, man, that's that's so amazing. You went to drama school because you know I know the, the British actors are much better about that here in America. You know, like you, kind of going back to the YouTube thing. A lot of people now, they just want to be famous and they upload videos. And it's sadly in America, you can get agents now from having a YouTube channel. But I respect so much that you did the drama school thing. I'm, I'm curious, you know, while you were there, can you tell me what you were, was it, was it like classical? Was it theater? Was it, you know, what, what kind of, what was the, I guess, curriculum of that program? Okay, right. Well, I think the great thing about identity drama school is that they they get in some amazing directors and teachers to come in and work with you. So I re- like I was only young, but I can remember. So and you know I, I went into the drama school, and this is what got like, credit to to IAG. 
um, you know, yeah, like I, in the drama school, you know, you're acting alongside like Letitia Wrights and Damson Idrises and do you know what I mean? Like all of these people have gone on and, and, and done big stuff in their career after. So yeah. I think even just being around those talents and learning, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing. So I think, and as well, like we used to do a lot of um, vocal exercises. Yeah. So we do some vocal exercises and then we'd come in and do the classical stuff, learn about um, Stanislavski and, and, and everybody and, and stuff like that. And I think for me, it was, it was, it was incredible because it was all, everything was fresh. Yeah. You know, I think when you have a fresh um, mindset towards things, I think you only take them in and embrace them. You kind of don't push them away. And so you take them in and you know, I was taking them in yeah. and I was embracing them and I was um, giving them back. Um, I think drama school is, is a great way for, for, for actors to be flexing their muscles and, and you know, constantly having that, that brain working. And, and did you sign before you started the drama school or once it was done? No, I, they, they signed, they had faith in me, man. They said they signed me before um, I wanted to, so I could have signed and like not gone to the drama school. But oh, wow. I wanted to go to the drama school. Yeah, yeah. I could have signed and like not gone to the drama school. And, Kudos and, like, to you, brother. Yeah, but because you know what it is, it's like I, I came into something, and I'm I'm the kind of person like if you if you well, anything you put me in, if I like if I want to do something, I'm gonna try my hardest. Do you get what I'm saying? I just don't have that kind of I have Half-assed that work like, energy. Yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have that. Do you get what I'm saying? So if I'm if I want something, I'm gonna try my hardest to get it. Do you know what I'm saying? So when it when I came into acting, it, and as well, you have to think I was like for for the area that I come from. Everyone that's grown up is like they they all want to be footballers. They want to be soccer players. Yeah, do you get what I'm saying? And it's like maybe one out of fifty might make it. Yeah, and so then the tough. other forty nine, the other forty nine, they don't know what to do with their life. Do you get what I'm saying? And it's like me being 12, 13 years old and getting into acting. It was like oh shit! It was like it's like I've been signed for a team somewhere. Yeah, totally. I mean? So so it was like if I didn't go and give it 130% every time I was going to that drama school, traveling to Dalston and do you get what I'm saying? If I wasn't yeah. doing that, I'm just cheating myself. Do you know what I mean? So no, I totally know, I, man. I was just like super committed to, to learning every single thing. And I almost had this kind of chip on my shoulder about it because, you know, I would speak to other actors in, 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 in drama schools or whatever. And they say, you know, yeah, I've been, I've been in this drama school for six years and they're all older than me and stuff. And, yeah, and, and I did have this little bit of chip on my shoulder that I don't want people to view me as this YouTube kid because yeah. I'm not. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I didn't want people to view me like that, so I would I would kind of work triple hard to to have them not view me like that. But I think you know everything works out. You know, I think I was, when I was going to the drama school and learning things and techniques and and um, the different things you could do with your voice and stuff. Like I'd go home and, and practice it at home and be like, whoa, there's like just off me learning that. Now I've learned how to do this. Yeah, how to do this? So for me, knowledge is power. And anytime I feel like I'm I'm learning something, I'm definitely gaining something, and it just makes me like it even more. That's I mean, it shows, man. Your talent's incredible. I'm curious while you were there, you know, and having the agency, did you be like, hey guys, I want to focus on this? No auditions, or were you still auditioning as well while you were there? No, we were still auditioning as well. Yeah, so the drama school was uh, it was like a part time thing. It was like two days a week. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. So it's not it's not like a, a five day um, like drama drama school. Um, so two days a week. So I, you know, at the same time, I'm still juggling like my final years of like high school. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Uh, so you're balancing high school drama school working and auditioning. Yeah, yeah man, look at that stamina, yeah. man. I mean, I'm. Yeah. Hey, dude, that's so incredible. I mean. For those listening, you know, it's, it's such an amazing work ethic. How were you able to allow yourself to, to not just get burned out? I think, um, I think a lot of it's down to my parents. Yeah. I think a lot of it's down to my parents, um, like good management, I'd say like <laughs> good yeah. management. Um, and also like, I'm someone that just like, when, when I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm achieving something, you know, it could be it could be cleaning the house. If if I if I'm cleaning half my house, and I look over that way and I can see oh half of it's done. It just yeah. makes me want to oh yeah, let's keep going. Do you get what I'm saying? I'm just yeah, that kind of we're almost state. there, right? Yeah, do you know what I'm saying? So when when I started doing the acting and I booked a job and I got paid and I booked another job and I got paid and I booked another job and I got paid and I'm 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 13, 14 years old. 
it was like it was it was only it would have been stupid for me not to to be like oh yeah this is this is fine I don't need to try hard it's like no nah, like I, I the way I viewed it is like I'm doing building blocks here so yeah. by the time I finished school maybe if I finished college maybe finished university them ages I might be in a in a better position for my life and my career so yeah that's why I always looked at it like three steps ahead. Do you get what I mean? And I think that's yeah. why I never got tired or burnt out. And I was, I was constantly having fun as well, constantly. You have to, man. You know, a, a great acting teacher of mine, you know, I mean, obviously we all struggle as actors, but, you know, the best advice he ever gave me was like, the moment this stops becoming fun, you know, move on. And yeah. that's the most imperative thing. And I'm curious with this work ethic, then, is that is that what got you Montana at 15? Yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, uh, I did I did a few other little jobs before Montana, um, and then we jumped into Montana, and you know, I, with Lars Mickelson. I mean, one of the one of the greatest men, you know. Yeah, and and yeah, one of the greatest, and as well as like it was, it was a little bit surreal. It was. I can't lie. It was a little bit surreal because, you know, I think it was just it was a lot. It was a lot at the time, and even like in terms of working with like Ashley and Ashley Walters and Adam Deacon and and the UK actors, it was it was super surreal because it was like I've grown up watching all of these guys, and it wasn't like it wasn't stardom, but it was a sense of achievement. I think. Yeah. I think that's what it was. It was like me looking at myself and going, just inside, not not projecting it, but I think it was me looking at myself and going, "Fuck, man, I'm I'm on I'm on set with like Lars, Ashley." Adam is like only only two years ago was I watching these people like yeah like did, like I never thought that I'd, I'd interact with them do you get what I'm saying so totally I feel like I feel like those early those 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 things early on in my career I think really set me to be like okay if, if I can do this then I can do this yeah and I can do this do you get what I'm saying so I feel like I feel like it just keeps putting hunger in in me and and fire in my belly and don't get me wrong acting is super hard man it has like some <clears throat> has some like depressing times and it like weighs on your on your mental health yeah, so much yeah, but yeah. i think um like i i, I kind of like to look at actors like performance athletes do you get what i'm saying and i think I we've totally, constantly yeah. gotta like push practice, ourselves and practice you get what i'm saying constantly yeah, yeah and and um and yeah so i think i think when when you stop looking at acting as as uh I think I think when you when you when you stop looking at actors as movie stars and yeah. you look at them as actors, I think then you start to understand all this stuff a lot more. And it humanizes that. the whole experience. Exactly, exactly. And so doing these films so young, you know, it it, it was that kind of uh, so to speak, your film school experience, hopping from set to set to set and learning the functionality of you know whatever budget in the set and how to work in that medium. You know, I yeah. mean, I, I must must be amazing to have had those experiences so young. Yeah, definitely. I feel like that was like my film school experience because when I stepped onto my brother the devil set, I didn't even, I didn't know what, what like what marks was. I didn't know about like um, um, eye lines. I didn't know yeah. none of that stuff. So I learned that on my brother the devil and then going through, going through. And then when we did Montana, I think the, the, the unique thing with Montana was, is that I was like, connected to to the to the movie from the start and i got to see sort of first i got to see how how it was in the audition room with 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 another actor when you've already got the role so you get yeah. to kind of hear what the cast director thinks afterwards what the director thinks afterwards and and i think that's a great way to kind of to to kind of see okay what to the do's and the don'ts of an audition sort of thing and that yeah. was great to kind of see um, and also it was, um, you know, we did training beforehand. It's an action movie and we did three weeks of fight training um, with Peter Pedro and his stunt team. Um, and, and that was a whole new experience. That was super fun as well. But I think, you know, when I've, whenever, whenever I've been making a, uh, like a project, it's always been fun. Do you know what I mean? It's never like, so even like if you're doing like super long hours or you're, you know what I'm yeah. saying, you're, you're working like crazy, it never kind of feels like, it never feels like you're doing an office job or something. Yeah. Oh, with, 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 with all due respect, do you get what I'm saying? It never yeah. feels like that. As much as, you know, the strain on your body and the strain on your mind is probably harder than an office job. Yeah. But it never feels like that. And I think, like you, like you, what you touched on earlier, like, it, 
if it doesn't feel fun to you, then you need to stop because it's going to get super stressful. Totally. So keeping that 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 energy and keeping that youthfulness and that funness, I think is so important. And I'm curious, you know, man, because, you know, you uh, correct me if I'm wrong here, but in America, at least around about 2012, they stopped making kind of these cool independent or, I don't know, you know, not not. $300 million movies, you know what I mean? And they started making only $300 million movies. And all of a sudden, you know, it was Marvel films that started becoming the norm. And then yeah. movie stars started moving to television. At yeah. that point in your career, having had these films, you know, was television, did something similar happen in the UK? Did you want to focus <coughs> on television or, you know? what? Um, no, I think what's like, I think in the UK, I haven't really experienced that. Like, because I think in the UK, like, obviously our budgets are completely different from the yeah. jump. Um, and I think, you know, now working in the UK, the, to get the big budget stuff is like, it almost has to be like either a UK slash American project or it has to be like a James Bond yeah. or something of this nature. Um, so I think in the UK, what we, what, and, and in Europe as well, actually, what we, what we do really, really well is independent film. And, um, and making good film of small budgets, I think. Um, so I think in the UK, that's still very much a thing. I think we're still making um, um, indie films uh, and good indie films. But I think definitely like with the introduction of also like online television, I think it's completely changed the game. I think like- Yeah, um, streaming. You know, you, you yeah, mean, streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You know, like now, like I did a, I did a, um, a Netflix film called iBoy. Uh, I think it was in like 2016, and that was that that budget and and whole production value felt very different to uh, a UK independent film. But it was it was it was a, it was a Netflix original, so it, you know it, it kind of granted why. But I think with the introduction of like Netflix, Amazon, I think I can only see productions getting better. Yeah. To be honest, I can only see them improving. And, you know, it's sad that in the States that they have done that because I think one, one of the things I love about America, like I was out in LA in 2018. Um, one of the things I love is that I feel like everybody's so collaborative in, in creation. You know, um, I was walking down the street and uh, a guy came up to me and asked me, hey, man, do, 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 he was asking me if I modeled, I think just for the way I was dressed. Yeah. Um, I was like, and I was like, no. Um, we was You're a good looking anyway. guy too, man. You know, don't, yeah. <laughs> I, I think it was the clothes. I think it was yeah. the clothes, but... Um, he, and then he was like, uh, we was talking, and he basically had like his, he was his own clothing store, and that he was that he was talking to me from. And then I was just talking to him, and I was like, look, I'm an actor, um, like I'll, I'll take your details. And anytime like we're trying to shoot something, if I need like a clothing store, then I'll let you know. And he was like, yeah, bro, like come through whenever, man. Like I let you do that, like for free, man. And I was just like, this is really nice. Like in London, I can't see that happening. I can't see you going to someone and saying, can I use your store for 35 minutes, and then saying, yeah. yeah. Um, so I think that's what's really, really great about um, the States is that, like, especially in LA, everybody's collabing and helping each other. I think is amazing. Did you come to the States because you wanted to, you know, find U.S. representation and open it up a bit? Yeah, so I, I had U.S. representation. I was with a manager um, and I came out for pilot season. It was my first pilot season. It was my first time being in America. Um, so I wanted to come out. I wanted to see what, pilot season was obviously I'm, we're like, trying to book a pilot obviously yeah totally. um, um but also just to, to get familiar with, with with the scene over there um to get familiar with the road to get familiar with with the culture um with the cast and directors with the people and yeah that's what we did and you know if it wasn't for covid i would be back out there now man you know oh, I, wow. I love los angeles so much like I just really feel at home there. Just away from acting. Like, if I, even if I was an actor, I think I'd love to live there. I feel like everybody's just so... Everyone's on this zen, peaceful vibe. And I yeah, love the beach, you know, man. Yeah. It, the trees, it does things to your soul. It does. It definitely does. So I'm curious, you know, once you had all these incredible credits, you know, Mikhail, what, what, I imagine you had a lot of leverage in what you wanted to do. So what was interesting to you, you know, like how did you start what was your process for selecting what you wanted to do yeah I think it was um it's always like how it resonates with me I think um how I connect to the sort of the role in the script and also you know I work very closely with my agent and um I trust her a lot of the times with her decisions as well um but I think you know what's important is 
to get something that resonates with you, whether it's, you know, whatever, whatever it is, I think I need to, I need to read it and be like, well, I, I like this. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, I think that's the most important thing. Um, but yeah, I think definitely as well, like it's, it's, a uh, it's a difficult pool as well, because I think the UK sometimes can be so saturated. And um, I think that's why I liked it. I liked it when I was out in the States is the, um, I think the pool of auditions is, is, is way wider. Yeah. The, uh, the kind of, the kind of things that they're offering um, compared to here. Interesting. And I think, um, it's, I think it's changing here a lot though. Um, oh, that's great. That's in, great. In the past three, four years. What, have, have your UK reps, you know, or, or you yourself ever been interested in doing the, the West end or, you know, the, the classical, you know, cause there's so much amazing theater there. Is that something that's ever been on your mind? Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's like it's 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 a shame because after Irregulars came out, that was sort of my plan. I would have loved to sort of do something for the like the next six months of the year, um, tour with it if it was if it was an option. Um, but obviously, all the theaters are closed. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, it's it's, it's quite a worrying time for theaters in general. Yeah. Um, so I hope that in the next few months it it opens back up. Yeah. And and we can we can go and watch some amazing things. Um, because yeah, definitely, I'd love I'd love to do that. For sure. Yeah. So let, let's talk about what we're here to talk about. The Irregulars. How did this come your way? Was that from LA pilot season or? No. So I was, I was here. Um, I was here at home and I, I got sent the, the tape, uh, the audition, uh, the script for the audition. And it was with Sarah Crow Carstens in, in Hackney. Um, so I went down, um, went down there. It was a lovely office as well. I uh, went down there um, and I read, I met with Johnny Allen, who was our lead director. Um, and Sarah Crow and Rebecca Hodgson, who's um, the uh, producer. And we just read, we just read, man. And I think what I definitely took from that was that I really wanted to work with Johnny. Um, you know, we, I went into the audition and I could, it's instantly we clicked. And I think yeah. that's very rare. And I think when that happens with a director and an actor is usually a good sign. Um, so I went in and we just clicked, you know, he was, he was throwing me direction and I was giving it straight back to him and he, he was super happy with it. So I left there. Um, then I got another call back to do a chemistry reading with Jojo Makari, who plays Billy and, um, and Darcy Shaw, who plays Jesse. So I came down, I read with Jojo and then that was just like, <laughs> that was just like an hilarious experience. Oh, that's awesome. Um, yeah. We like, we, me and Jojo instantly clicked and was just like throwing like, game back at each other and stuff um that was really good and then I, I read with Darcy as well and another girl that was going off with Jesse um and then we really clicked as well so you know I, was, I had super positive vibes from it but you know I never I, I never tried to get too committed to a job before they've given it to me because it can it can it can be really heartbreaking yeah when you've oh read man something, trust me you've read I've, something I've like, been going really through like it myself you know you, you it's it's so tough to to let something go once you are so eager for it. Yeah. So, yeah. So I just try not to think about it. And then um, I did a, a couple more chemistry tests, I remember. And then they called up my agent and, and then they said that they, they've offered me the role. And she called me and told me. And I was just absolutely ecstatic. I was just like, wicked, man. I was like, anytime she calls me and says, like, yeah, they're, they're offering you the role. I always said to her, great, great. Yeah. When are they going to send me the script? <laughs> like, that's like yeah. the first thing. So did you like, even know it was Holmes and Watson or did you have no idea? I mean, they they had told us, yeah. Oh, okay, they, they, cool. They, yeah, yeah, they had told us that it's like a new spin-off uh, Sherlock Holmes thing and blah, 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 blah. blah. Um, but they never gave us like all episodes. And then for me, I'm someone that, I think acting can come with a lot of anxiety sometimes. Like I know like actors have to be confident and we have to be, you know, fearless, but yeah, you know, with me anyway, there, there are times when I am really shy and introverted and, you know, I, um, so I think the way I kind of combat them, them anxieties is by preparation. Yeah. So I like to have, you know, I like to have my script and prep and <clears throat> I'm, so I, when I go on, you know, with this stage or, or onto the set or whatever, I know that I'm, I'm covered in all yeah. angles. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? That's just me. Um, so I was just like, hey, when are they going to get the script out so I can get to work on this? So I'm super eager. And yeah, they got to, they got us the scripts out and then we travelled up to Liverpool because obviously we're shooting in Liverpool. Um, and we travelled up to Liverpool and I met the guys and everything, all the gang members, the irregulars. Um, yeah, we did like a week of rehearsals. And then, and then yeah, we, was, we started shooting, man. 
And, it, you know, was that amazing doing this period fantasy piece? I mean, was that, you know, especially like what you guys must have shot for more than six months, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was incredible because, like, when I started to see the sort of how 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 crazy it was going to be like with the Victorian stuff was when when we did our costume fitting. Yeah, and uh, it was it was, it was just a place in this place called Angels. It's not too far from where I live, and uh, we went down. I went down to this costume fitting, and I met Edward Gibbon and Nadine, um, sort of like the, the HODs in costume, um, and they were showing me Spike's outfits, and I was just looking at them like, wow, like this these are some stylish outfits, bro. Like I was yeah. saying that like, yo, these are stylish guy. Like, am I the only stylish guy, or, or is everyone stylish? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you just did this for me. Yeah. Um, but no, everybody was super stylish and, you know, speaking to them, it was like, so their vision was kind of mixing this, this traditional, uh, Victorian look and kind of splashing these modern aspects on it. Yeah. Um, and that's what we did. And so like, I tried, like, and I remember coming away from that and I was like, this is going to be sick. Yeah. Like that, that, yeah. From that costume fit and I came away and I was like, this is going to be sick. Um, and then, yeah, when we traveled up and, and we find that and we saw, I saw all the gang in their costumes and that. It was surreal. It was like, and even at the read through, sorry, even before we went up to Liverpool, we and we did the read through. Even that was a surreal experience because, you know, I hadn't. I'd met uh, Billy and uh, I'd met Jojo and and Darcy who played Billy and Jesse, but I hadn't met B, uh, Thaddeo, and I hadn't met um, Harrison who plays Leo. So when we finally all met each other and we're sitting around that that round table and we're all reading, and you, it's the first time you actually get to hear the the page come to life. Yeah. You know, because I've been reading it, but I've been reading it as Mikel. In your head. Spike, yeah, yeah, you get what yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Um, and then, you know, you know, everyone's reading it as their characters and they all swear, ooh. And it was like, I was just, I, I, every time, and it was funny because it's like, every time we was reading it, we was like locking eyes with each other and like, oh yeah, this is going to be good, man. Oh, I love the way you did that. And it was just, it was just a really fun experience. Um, and uh, yeah, I think we, we super, like we all bonded really well. And got along really well, and then yeah, I feel like that really transfers onto screen. So it was a it was an incredible time filming. Yeah, man, it was, and you know, we were filming up in Liverpool, which you know, for me, coming from London, you know, all my family's down in London, all my friends are down in London. It's the same with like most of the gang as well, apart from Darcy, and you know, we've moved up to Liverpool for for eight months, nine months worth of filming. Uh, it can be a little bit scary. It can be a little bit, you know, it can be a little bit intense. But what was great about this job, not just the cast, but the crew. You know, the crew was literally either half Scouse, which is Liverpool, or either Mancunian, which is Manchester. Yeah. And anyone that's sort of from the north knows that Scousers and Mancunians, they got a little bit of like this, this, this rivalry banter. But it's all love, you know what I mean? It's just yeah. this rivalry banter. Um, and... Uh, yeah, so turning up to set every day was just, yeah, there was never a bad day on set. There was constant laughs going on. There was constant good times, constant good memories. Um, and as well, we were filming like amazing show, doing like amazing scenes every day, working with like amazing actors and amazing directors. So yeah, it was like one of the most enjoyable shoots I've ever done. Talk to me, you know, as an actor, when it comes to fantasy elements, you know, mm. acting that stuff, especially reading it and then, you know, where a lot of it's going to come in post. Was that a challenge for you? You know, it was, it was a little bit, but I think what was, what was incredible was that the team that we had was so, so helpful as well. You know, Tom Bidwell, the writer was amazing. You know, he's been working on this for, for 10 years. So, and when he's just one phone call away, one text away, it really does help with those things. Um, because you know, you know, we're doing fantasy stuff, and it talks about a rip, and it talks about this. Yeah, and, and you don't you get know, to see that literally while you're filming. You know, you know, and, yeah. Um, but I think for me, what's always good is that sometimes I can let my imagination run away with me. Yeah. And um, so, so being able to say to people, okay, yeah, you're talking about this rip, but you know, I'm, I might be imagining a forty foot rip. Yeah. That's that's that's, that's bright red. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And in post, they put in. A twelve-inch rip, that you know. So it's yeah, yeah, my yeah. reaction's gonna be different. So I think being able to speak to people and actually, yeah, no, it's kind of like there's like, it's like okay, cool. I know exactly what I need to do. And I think as an actor, that's all kind of you you can ask for is having clear direction, and the rest is kind of on you. Yeah. Um, 
So being able to get that clear direction was just so, so important, I think. And then, and then coming back during COVID, was, was that a real challenge acting wise to, you know, get back to where you were, but now you got all these masks and protocols, you know, was, was that tough on nah, you? No, nah, you know what? I, it wasn't tough, like on the, on acting. I think what it was tough was, is like, because we'd been working with this, these, this, this crew um, for like almost a year. And then we broke for COVID and it was like four months of not seeing each other. Yeah. And we come back and did, um, you know, the, the, the six to 12 weeks that we ended up doing. And then there was no rap party. And it was almost an anti-climax. And I think coming back in and, you know, seeing those faces, you kind of just wanted up, wanted to run up to them and be like, oh, give us a hug. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I think that was the hardest thing, I think. That makes total sense, man. You yeah. know, having that camaraderie. Well, well, talk to me, brother. How, how does it feel to have it about to come out to the world? Are you excited? Super excited, man. It's um, a little bit, no, no, I wouldn't say anxious, but I think, you know, it's been a long time coming. Um, I'm super excited for it to come out now and, and um, see what the world thinks of it. Um, yeah, it's been, it's been so long coming. Like, you know, COVID's been in the middle of it. Um, you know, we started filming in 2019. It was meant to come out in October 2020. So it's almost a year on after that. Yeah. Um, but I'm super excited for it to come out because I feel like the irregulars is a show that is so needed right now. Totally. You know, like, you know, even if we, you know, it's a Victorian show set in London. Um, about speaking. about friendship, though, you know, I mean, yeah. Really, yeah, you know. Yeah. And it's like, I think that's what I think, you know, as much as it's supernatural in Sherlock Holmes, I think it's about friendship and compassion. And, and I think over the last year that we've had, I think this kind of epitomizes why we need each other. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? It's just kind of like, why do we need friendship and, and, and all of these things? And I hope that as well, I think there's a message there about, about being yourself. Yeah. And I think, you know, we're in, we're in a crazy world at the moment where, you know, I grew up in, you know, on YouTube, basically, you know, yeah. you're going to put it that way. You know, I grew up 12, 13, you know, I was making YouTube videos and then I was making, you know, acting stuff, but I don't feel like I ever had any sort of, pressure the way that these new kids have got pressure that are not kind of putting the that, that just have instagram or have roblox yeah, accounts or totally whatever do you know what I'm saying? i feel like there's a real pressure on them now and uh to kind of be perfect or this idea of perfect or something yeah or to to pretend it looks that way yeah exactly yeah. and i think i hope that people that watch your regulars they get the message as well that it's about being yourself you know you've got yeah. five individuals there that sometimes they can't be themselves, but they can only be themselves when they're with each other. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? And it's 100%. like, hundred percent. And yeah, I think it's, it's for me the whole show is is, is more about friendship um, than anything else. But I think there's so many elements there of like supernatural horror show of Sherlock Holmes of there's love interest there. So it's like a huge roller coaster ride of emotions. I think. Yeah. Well, dude, you're so incredible in the show, and I'm I'm so proud Thank of you, you, man. You know, you, you. The, so many amazing things are coming your way. Final few questions here. You know, it's it's been a really really dark year. You know, and you had that break. What's what's been keeping you inspired? Ooh, that ooh, that's that's a good question. You know, what actually has been keeping me inspired? Because I think it's been hard at times. I've kind of been losing a lot of inspiration, but I think. What's been keeping me inspired is my family. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's yeah. I think my family might like you know I'm the eldest of of six, so I got a oh, lot wow. of like little siblings. Do you get what I'm saying? And I think um, I think me I kind of like to look at myself as as a as hopefully as a role model for them. Yeah. Um, you know I try to uh, hit new heights every time, so then they know that it's achievable. Yeah. Um, and I think that's, I think that's been my inspiration, you know, is, um, waking up and thinking to myself, look, I need to continue to do good work to make my family proud, man, and put them in better positions. I think that's, that's been my motivation and my inspiration through COVID. Um, yeah, cause it's been, it's been hard, man. Like even working out, dude, like I, know. I wake up, Ugh. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to work out. And then I, and then I'm just like, yeah, uh, what's the point? Like I know. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. I totally relate, man. And and uh, I'm, I'm curious, man, you know, next question is, you know, for the young Mikels out there, you know, even even the older ones that are just starting to want to get into this acting thing. Any words of wisdom or advice for them? 
Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think my, my first thing I would say is create your own content. Yeah. Don't wait for anybody. Um, you know, I think I was watching an interview with uh, Marlon Wayne yeah. um, a couple of days ago and he was talking about, uh, you know, sort of not getting any roles in Hollywood and having to write scary movie and then not getting any roles in Hollywood and having to um, make Haunted House. And, 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 you know, it's, 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 these are the things that I think we need to remember is that acting is something that me and you can do. We, we, we could act right now you totally. know what I'm saying? Like, through the zoom. And we don't, we don't need a, a red cam and lighting and makeup yeah. for us to be actors. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think go out, create, create your stuff. Um, and, 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 you know, keep keep mastering your craft, whether that's drama school, theatres, making your own stuff. Keep mastering your craft and try not to get deflated. I know that's just such an easy thing to say, yeah. try not to get deflated. But I think, you know, and I speak to a lot of actors and it's me, myself. And sometimes you speak to actors that are like achieving more than you. Yeah. And they have these crazy anxieties about about certain things. And so I think that never, ever stops. Yeah. You know, I, I don't think I don't think that ever stops. But I think you've got to just kind of. Like, like I said earlier, I think for me, all of those anxieties can be very, very um, present. But the only way I combat that is from preparation and knowing yeah. that I'm, I'm ready. And yeah. So I think that's also my thing is, um, is create your own stuff and make sure that you're ready and be professional constantly. Beautiful, man. Well, very final question, man. What's next for you? Anything that you can, uh, you can reveal, you know? Yeah, well, obviously, Irregulars comes out 26th of March. So we're, we're, we're seeing how that goes. Um, hopefully we do a season two. Um, I was meant to shoot. Uh, I was I was meant to shoot a movie in April, um, but I think because of COVID and stuff, it's been pushed back once again. So I'm I'm not exactly entirely sure when we're gonna start doing that. Um, and hopefully I'm gonna be in the states soon, man. Hopefully I'm gonna be out there um, by the end of this year. You know, so look out for that as well. Um, and then I've got a few things that I'm working on away from acting. You know, I'm quite creative in in. In, in just in general so i'm working on clothing at the moment um so hopefully you guys can get a little bit of that towards the end of the year as well i'm amazing what's the best way for people to stay in touch and and follow what you're doing brother yeah hit me on instagram i'm on there it's uh jpeg mckell um jpeg dot mckell um yeah that's basically my my, my only social media um I, i've got a snapchat but i'm not too active on it so hit yeah. me on the instagram that's where i post everything and we can stay connected Amazing. I'll put that here. And yeah. dude, Miguel, brother, you're, you're such a talent. Stay in Thank touch, you, man. man. You know, look, look me up. And when you come to the States, I'm, I'm so proud of you, man. The best is yet thank to you. come. And, and thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you so much for having me, dude. Yeah. So much love, my brother. Okay. Thank you. All right. I am thrilled to announce that An Actor Despairs is partnering with a wonderful CBD company called Kind Farms. Everyone out there has heard of CBD. I started taking it a few years ago when I first started getting sober and to help with my anxiety. Sadly, as one can do, I was overtraining in the gym and a friend recommended a topical and a tincture to help with the pain. I tried it. It was okay. However, recently, I was introduced to a product that has really changed my life. Not only has it helped me with anxiety, but I am stronger than I have ever been. I'm able to carry out lifts my body used to prevent me from doing. Kind Farm products have single-handedly changed my life athletically and personally. They utilize 100% local licensed farmers, organic cultivation, and CO2 extraction for superior CBD. Kind Farms is turning CBD to a kind alternative to pharmaceuticals. Let's transform tobacco row into hemp row. If you want to get involved, please reach out. Together, we can make a difference. You can use my code RYAN10 for 10% off. You can find them on Instagram at Kind Farms Inc., all one word. That's K I N D P H A R M S I N C. And their website is kindfarmsinc.com. Once again, my code for 10% off is RYAN10.